Hello, and today we're going to be talking about, um, it's like battery versus drum machine in uh, Bitwig, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and open up a um, this that we're talking about here. We're just going to get this here. We're going to call this um, whatever. We're going to enter this project, uh, this folder, uh, and pretend it's like its own project. Okay, so basically, um, I'll show you battery. Now, I went ahead and made a list of things that are in battery. So, for the specific main controls, you have a volume envelope, pitch envelope, velocity to volume and pitch, a filter compressor, and then like as an effect you have saturation, bit crushing, EQ, transients, and then built in with the effect you have your obvious like reverb and delay sends. So I'll show you that again in here and I'll put in just like one sample to illustrate my point. And I'm actually going to use like a chord sample, like a tonal chord or something, or maybe a one-shot chord. Sure. Something that's not like too much your pain. Okay, so we have this this in uh, battery now. Yay, yay, yay. Sounds beautiful. So we're gonna look at the uh, the pitch envelope here, um, or the volume envelope. Obviously, we do just think yay. it has a, a slight attack to prevent um, the incoming audio from sounding too sharp. Um, it's um, most uh, plugins have this like. Uh, that's gonna crash because it didn't download properly for some reason. Serum. Serum. You'd see there's a 0.5 millisecond delay on the master synthesizer. This controls the synthesizer. If it was at zero, it increases like clicking and stuff in the audio, and uh, it just makes a mess, right? So usually that's why that's there. So we're gonna open this again. My native instruments didn't install properly and battery just didn't want to work. Oh, it saved it. That's impressive. Okay, so we have this. Yay, yay. Right, volume envelope. We can see what it looks like. Yay, yay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You hear what it's doing. Yay. Now it's not even working. There's like a hold function. Yay. So how would an example of this well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yay, 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 yay. Like that, I guess. Uh, there's a filter. Yay, yay. Yeah, yay. This could be done outside of yay. of it as well. This is just a quick high pass, low pass. Um, this the engine here is just the sampler. You can change the kind of sampler that is being used. Um, there's a pitch envelope. Yay, 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 yay. I don't need to explain that. It's just modulating the tonal pitch of it. Basic. Com this is just a quick compressor with all its ratio and threshold settings already. Or well, when you in do the amount, this is the amount of threshold and like ratio, I guess. So it's just quick compression, not like precise or anything. You can hear what that does. <laughs> Obviously, if I compress it too much, it's going to distort. <laughs> and then let's go on to we have the sends for like delay and reverb. Yay, yay, yay. Yep. And the velocity here, basically, when this is at 100%, it just means that how I play the note in terms of velocity will um, change the volume. If it's at 0%, it basically means no matter what I do, as long as I activate the MIDI, it's going to, it's going to play the note at the same volume every time. And then if I were to try to put this in the note editor and edit the, the velocity of that MIDI note, it wouldn't do anything. Um, the pitch will take the velocity and turn into 
12 semitones and in between worth of um, pitch data that is proportional to your um, pitch or proportional to your velocity so if you wanted to do a riser you could start off with like your low velocity and that would give you like the lowest pitch until you reach the maximum velocity of 127 which would give you the original pitch of the audio so you can make like a riser like a rising kick or something or snare using this and you have your effects saturation that's basically distortion you have your lo-fi um, this is bit crushing you have a filter slash EQ basically this is just an EQ or it could be a filter and then you have your more in-depth compressor and then you have a transient uh, master then you have your buses this is where um, the drum machine is outbeaten by battery is that the fact that it doesn't have buses however you can get buses I uh, will show you how to do that and that's what makes like Bitwig's drum machine just as good as battery so if you can't uh, get your hands on battery if you don't want to torrent battery because you respect native instruments or you just don't want to like get malware or whatever you don't have to do that or if you can't afford it then um, just use Bitwig's drum machine and you know what like every other dog can do this too I, I usually just throw down my audio my kicks and stuff like usually just go down on the playlist like like this that's how I used to do that's how I did this for the longest time I just threw down audio everywhere so I mean that's the best way to do it really rather than having like battery battery is just convenient and I'll show you how to make a drum machine convenient so those are the main the main effects uh, the editor setup and modulation are more of like things that a DAW can handle so this is if you were to use battery like standalone and make loops in it um, these would be these would be important or if you're trying to do like more in-depth things with like step patterns and and such um, yeah so enough of that it's gonna crash I'm just gonna delete you and then here is drum machine so you can get it by oh no man does that actually happen my search function crashed on me here why is that no why does it do that I wonder we're gonna reopen bitwig to get that back because that's how much I like my search function what's taking so long there we go oh don't open two it should it's fine it did no it didn't it's good and back to ah, it doesn't matter I'm just making new yeah there it is so control G out and back in you okay so now we do drum machine here's drum machine um, if your search function ever stops working you don't want to go out you can also search in here I was just too lazy to go over here probably should have just did this instead and you type in drum machine it'll stay there and that way you can just have like if you want like an EQ over here or something you just have this here all the time uh, and it works so here's drum machine I can do I can add as many samples in here as I want but you'll notice that when I actually come to the mixer oh, oops, here we go and click this there's these arrows here right for drum machine and this will open uh, each individual track I have in here I select each each one of these and then basically if I add like an EQ in here what oh I have to add a sampler first if I add a sampler in here it will pop up in the effects chain on this effect and this is another like good way of like viewing this like very uh, easily if you want to e if you want to view it like this because it's right in front of your face and it's a lot neater um, although like um, most people probably have like this on theirs and uh, it's probably even more like this but I like to have like the big meters all the way up but you can view it in here on these chains here um, the way you would make buses in drum machine is you would actually click new instrument and go straight to um, in the routing oh this would be interesting is this an effect shouldn't be 
Oh, it might be a container, would it? Yeah, in your containers, if you go to your instrument layer and select instrument layer, it looks like this. You can you can close it if you want. You add a drum machine, and each drum machine you add is your bus. So I'm gonna add a drum one drum machine, and this is going to be for kick and snare. And I'm gonna add a new one, and it's gonna be drum machine. And this one is going to be hi hats. So now, now I have this. Um, basically, what's cool about this now is if I open this, you can see I have um, kick and snare here. I'll color them differently. Yeah. Here we go. So the kick and snare and the hi hats. These are now separate audios, right? It looks just like it did when we just had the drum machine on the side and then we had like had this this is what it looks like right now but here's where it gets interesting where this is just the drum machine if i actually come in here and activate let's say my kick and my snare on c1 and c sharp one and then i come to the hi-hats and activate this is also important if you use this on the previous one, whatever one you use in the previous one, whatever cell, you can't use in the next one unless you want it to be playing at the same time. So if I put down the C1 MIDI note, I just want it to play this kick. I don't want it to play anything out of this. So I'm going to select D1, C sharp 1, and these ones, and that will select the rest of them, but leave those ones alone. And then now we have this, where the single drum machine didn't. So what this allows you to do is you can actually have your kick and snare be processed separately and then go to the, the master and then have your hi-hats and stuff be made and then go to the instrument layer. So what's helpful about this is when you want to sidechain, you can do your master effects here with your, your drums. I'm just going to put this on for show. This is usually what goes on my drum, my drum channel right here. This is my drum channel, and then that's also what goes on here. It won't go on there for some reason. Just listen to me. We're all friends here. They won't go on here. Basically, I would have, I'll just put them down. EQ, compressor, and then a reverb here as well. So then I can have these all organized, but what I'll do is I'll throw a dynamics on the end of this. And then you can select uh, what you want here. Now, if you go to group three and go to instrument layer, you have instrument layer chains. So you have kick and snare, pre-post, and you have hi-hats. And then here you can select everything. If you go to the kick and snare and just say post, what it's going to do is it'll take whatever comes out of the kick and snare after this reverb, and then that's what's going to sidechain your boat. But I use like a sidechain signal, which would be like a um, a sampler playing this specific audio. Let me find it. This audio right here. This is my trigger audio. It's just white noise playing like really short. And that's what would be mine. So when I come in here, I can select my trigger after trigger post. So it's selecting this this MIDI uh, one right here, this pink one, red one. And then it's going to sidechain my hats when I adjust what needs to be adjusted here when I when I do this. It, that's what it's going to sidechain it by now. For um, so that way my hi hats and stuff can be sidechained. And then I have my kick and my snare that can play separately from them. And then when I go into here and actually make an instrument layer, um, like kick, kick snare, and you know, like rinse and repeat. And then you do like hats in between or whatever. I'll do all three so it's like apparent. And then if I were to actually sit here and loop this. Oops, there we go. If I actually were to come in here and loop this and look in the instrument layer back in here again, 
you can see that if I lowered this an octave, that it's going to do this here. So in here, you can see it's playing the C1 and the C sharp, but there's no audio there, so it doesn't matter. But it is playing those hi-hats, and it is playing... It's not playing the kick and the snare right, though. Okay, I messed this up. Here we go. Now this now this will look the way I want it to. So see, I was playing these these kicks here, like one, two, one, two, one, two. That's my kick and my snare, and then this stuff there that's going on in the background where there's no sample. That's where on the other sampler, th these are. So they're still hitting them, but they're in different sections. So like when this is playing no audio, there's being audio in a different sampler. But this is a way you can have them both in the same drum machine without having to like because how I used to do this was I used to do drum machine I used to have two drum machines why can't I duplicate this there we go I had two drum machines and basically this MIDI clip would be down here but this part would be here instead offset not one so as you can see here in this in this clip um, the there's the kick snare like one two one two and then my hi-hats are in a different one but now it's all in the same one like it would be if you use something like battery and if you want to go through and edit everything individually you still can I don't know why you're off there we go you have your kick and snare right so when you open your kick and snare and you go to your sampler you have these three options here you have this plus sign this plus sign and then pretending these weren't here you have this plus sign the plus sign on the left is the fx for whatever cell you're on the one in the middle is for the um the kick and the snare bus in the program just the kick and the snare and then the one on the far right is for the kick and the snare and the hi-hats for both of those so I have this in here but this is inside this has the blue background where these effects are and you can see there's still a black one over here so if I actually add something here then I've, I've still got these right here are my um, hi-hats only effects and then this is my hi-hats and drums if you still wanted to like process them like that um, which is basically what battery does and inside here is there a sampler in here no if I add a sampler why won't you let me add a sampler there we go you still won't let me add one okay we'll play this game then So this here is the sampler, right? Did I not just open up the sampler? What the? Let's just do this. Here we go. That's what I wanted, I think. Yeah, when I double click, when I click on the cell, it opens the sampler. The sampler has a pitch uh, knob, a gain, and this is its attack and decay and stuff right here. If your audio samples are stopping once the note releases, that's because your decay time or your release time, this knob here, is um, like probably around here. If you put it all the way up to the maximum, when you release the MIDI note, it won't stop playing the sample in case that's a problem. You also have some LFOs. You have your velocity sensitivity here. You can also take this arrow button here and take your velocity sensitivity and attach it to your pitch by 12 semitones and then now you have that feature that was offered in um, battery where you could hook your velocity to your pitch and then you have a um, filters as was mentioned in the and the um, battery and um, yeah the velocity sensitive and you can also change the output here again and if you wanted to add like distortion 
or those kinds of effects like compression then you would just search through any compressors you might have and add your effects and your EQing where instead of using the fairly limited single band EQ that was in battery you can now use the um, EQ5 or like fab filter or whatever you want to use to process your audio so now you have multiple bands instead of having to choose between like this or a combination of like this and this and then these were just like unoptionably off so you can only have like a high pass and you can have some sort of bell and uh, yeah that is how you use the drum machine and why it's just as good as battery although I'm sure there are some things you could do in battery but there's almost anything you could do in battery could be once again done in a DAW because battery would just have it more more right in your face and easier for you to like access I suppose if you if you don't think in depthly about your drum processing and you just want to try things out uh, it's better to do it like in in the DAW this way because you can just add like comb filters and just like a bunch of silly things to your drums or process them process them very heavily and battery uses a lot of RAM like a lot of CPU while it's open it's a pretty intensive program it takes like my computer sometimes like five seconds to load it um, and then, like if you have like samples and stuff it will just like kill your computer CPU like on my laptop as soon as I start making a track and I get my drum loop going in battery and then I start like putting out my samples it doesn't take long before my um, my DSP starts to like just max out and then all my audio starts to like clip and distort as it comes out because my CPU is so high so uh, yeah